Hi everyone, and welcome to part 6 of Crossing Newfoundland by ATV 2019. In today's video, you're going to see us drive our rental cars from Grossmore National Park back to Deer Lake, then we pick up our ATVs and side-by-sides, and we call Conway's Towing to take us from Deer Lake to Cornerbrook. Then we get on the trail, and we ride all the way to Robinson's and spend the night at Pirate's Haven. Like I mentioned before, when we get over here towards Deer Lake, we called Conway's Towing, they came and picked us up, and they transported us all the way down over to here, which is uh, Logger School Road. Then all you have to do is jump on this uh, this old logging road, basically, to get back onto the rail bed, which is over here in blue. There's two options. You don't have to do that. We did that this year, but you can drive these mountain roads up to here and come back down to Cornerbrook and drive that way. The reason we called Conways is because we figured we'd be saving some time driving up through the mountains. But when it was all said and done, it probably took us about two hours to load up the machines, get transported, and then go back all the way to where we were going and get dropped off again. So I think next time if we were to do that, that's just what we would do is drive up through those mountain roads. One of the drawbacks of having your windshield on uh, when there's a lot of puddles and light rain is that it's, sometimes it's hard to see, just like it is through here. And a couple of times I would hit uh, hard water puddles and the steam would come up from the engine underneath and it would steam up the, in the inside of the windshield really bad so luckily I had a towel with me I kept wiping it off but it was annoying now and then. How are you? Good how are you guys? Not too bad. Good we got... Finally mid, eh? oh. <laughs> I always love running into people on the trail that I know are following my website to get across the island and this year we actually came across quite a few. To give you a quick recap we get dropped off here where this truck is in the map and we've just arrived at uh, Glance right here. It's kind of a tradition for us now to stop in at the Camp 7 Lounge. Some of the guys were a little bit wet because of hitting all the puddles in the rain, so they had a chance to dry off a bit and change some clothes and do some dry gear before we get back on the trail. Cool. Okay. I noticed in my rearview mirror that several of the machines uh, that we were traveling with weren't behind us, so I pulled over to wait to see if there was anything wrong. Huh? We stopped for a pee break. Right oh, okay. <laughs> uh, whoa. I gotta go back. What happened? I left my phone back there, I think. Bruce thought he lost his phone there for a minute, but uh, he didn't. It fell down out of his pocket behind the seats in his commander, and uh, we ended up finding it before we went back on. Now we're at the uh, sand dunes around the Stephenville, uh, Stephenville Crossing area, and these are quite fun to drive through. In case you're wondering why I'm picking up my tablet and putting it back down while I'm checking the map, it's because I broke my mount. Um, I guess I got a few years out of it, so it was pretty good. It wasn't all that expensive anyways, but uh, I think next time I'm going to get a RAM mount that's something nice and sturdy. I'd say that must be it right here.
Oh, 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 look at friggin' look at Dale just zooming up there about 100 miles an hour. Yeah, be careful if there's anybody coming up there. Before getting on the rail bed and continuing on our way to Robinson's, we decided to go back down to the beach for just a few minutes and just have a break. When we left Galance earlier, which is shown here on the map, we get on that blue trail, we headed back towards Port of Basque and we stopped right here at Stephenville Crossing for gas. If you get gas there, which I suggest you do, shortly after that you have to cross a bridge over here and you have to get on paved road to do that. There's an old train trestle right here, but it's out so you can't cross that anymore. You have to actually cross the road here, uh, so just make sure there's no traffic and stick to the right and do that. Pretty much as soon as you cross that, you come across all the sand dunes that you saw us driving on, which is right here. Now, I don't have it on the map, but what we did is we followed the beach down along here, and then we came back up right around here and got back on the trail. Continued on our way, and it wasn't too long before we got to this big sand hill here. If you've seen part one of this series, you already saw us going up and down this uh, sand hill a few times, and Terrence was going up and down in his red uh, CF moto there. Now he's going up in his father-in-law Dan's Can Am Commander. <laughs> oh, there you go. Nobody's done that before. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. <laughs> Once we were done our horsing around on the sand pit there, we get back on the trail. Finally some sunlight. We arrived in Robinson's and pulled up to Pirate's Haven. When you're looking for Pirate's Haven off the rail bed, you can't miss it really. There's a big sign right here that takes you up this trail towards uh, towards the campground. There's signs when you get in here for turning left and so forth. You're gonna get up, come through this long gravel road here that takes you through the campground, right to their main lodge, which is right here. So you can go in there, you can check in, you can have dinner, have a beer at the bar, whatever you like. It's a great spot. The staff are fantastic. We always enjoy showing up here every year. Paul and Ruth, who are the owners, they treat everybody like family. Very down-to-earth, welcoming people, very gracious. We couldn't be happier staying here. Check out their website at PirateshavenAdventures.com to check out everything that they have to offer. They also have three great, really well-appointed cabins, each with two bedrooms, covered porches with a nice view. They're very well-appointed. These are a great place to spend the night. They also do awesome ATV tours. So if you're crossing the island with your own machines like we do, they can still take you through some backcountry areas that you would never find on your own. If you happen to be going around Newfoundland in your car and just visiting, they can also rent you an ATV so you can drive around on your own or you can have them take you on a fantastic tour. Day 2 at Pirate's Haven. We spent two nights in Pirate's Haven this year so that Paul and Ruth could take us on an awesome backcountry ATV tour. This year's trip, they took us to a place where we had to wait for the tide to go out before we could get there. Paul and Ruth know all the good spots. On this tour, we had a wide range of trails. We did some rail bed, we did some beaches, uh, some sandy beaches, some gravel beaches. We, Like I said, we had to cross some of the ocean floor when the tide left. We had a great barbecue, we had some great scenery. We went to a point where there was a lighthouse. And when we got back, at the end of the day, they had a fantastic meal waiting for us. Then I went across the road, took some video footage of the sun setting over the ocean and the bluff. And you'll see it all now.
When we get to our destination, Paul and Ruth unloaded their side-by-side. They had a fire going and they had food on within about 10 minutes. It was quite something to watch them. Bruce sent his drone up for a few minutes, but it was really windy once he got above the tree, so unfortunately he couldn't send it too far. After we finished eating, we continued on on another trail up until we got to the lighthouse. We took some photos and some videos so you guys could see them. After we were done at the lighthouse, we turned around and made our way back to Pirate's Haven. We couldn't have had a better time. The weather was great, the sun was shining, the temperature was nice. Paul and Ruth are fantastic hosts. If you come to Newfoundland and do this trip, you have to do yourself a favor and come and visit Paul and Ruth at Pirate's Haven. The sun was almost down when we got back, so I drove across the road to the bluff took some drone footage and a couple of photographs. You have to see this in person. This looks nice, I think, on photos and on the drone footage, but you really have to see it in person. Thanks for watching everyone, and stay tuned for part 7, where we ride from Robinsons back to Port of Bass to take the ferry back to Nova Scotia. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please go ahead and do that, and then the notification bell next to it so you get notified every time I upload a video.